compared to a positive breast cancer, it's a soft type of breast cancer that accounts for approximately 15 to 20 percent of all of the breast cancers diagnosed in the U.S. or worldwide. So HER2 can refer to a protein or can refer to a gene. So when we talk about a HER2 positive breast cancer, it means that either the tumor has too much of the HER2 protein or too many copies of the HER2 gene. You know, it's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, the story actually dates back uh, to uh, the latter part of uh, the 80s when HER2 was first found. But then the trials in the subsequent years started uh, letting us understand that this could be a good target to treat patients with breast cancer. So I'm very fortunate that uh, I got involved with the trials very, very early. Uh, back actually uh, 12 years ago. So in 1998, we started writing trials that involved management of patients with HER2 positive breast cancer. Initially, patients with advanced disease, and then uh, we evaluated uh, a drug called Herceptin in patients who had tumors that had been resected or removed. In other words, patients who had early stage breast cancer. And this was the study that gave us the first clue that there was a problem with testing. You know, we are very fortunate here at Mayo that we have been conducting uh, research in this area for many years, and we were one of the first groups that identified that there was a problem with reliability of HER2 testing at the national level. And this has now actually been extended to a worldwide issue. The difficulty with the test is that uh, breast cancers can be what we call heterogeneous, so they're all not the same. There may be parts of the tumor that have a lot of the HER2 protein. Other parts of the tumors may not have a lot of the HER2 protein. Additionally, there are several steps that are important for us to be able to conduct the test appropriately that really need to be followed by everybody who thinks about doing the test. As an example, when someone is diagnosed with breast cancer, we need to take the tumor from the patient's breast to the laboratory to be tested. So that is a certain amount of time. Then we have to process the tissue specimen. Then we have to use the proper reagents for specific amounts of time. And after that, we need pathologists with expertise so that they can appropriately assess the amounts of the proteins or the genes. So it's a complex uh, uh, line of steps that need to be taken. But I think it's, it's, although complex, I think it can be done well in reference or experienced uh, laboratories. Yeah, there's some judgment because even for positivity, you know, the recommendations made by the College of American Pathologists are asked for a definition of positivity are actually different than the criteria that were used to approve these tests. So there's a little bit of controversy there, and physicians uh, should be able to discuss these issues uh, with their patients. We at Mayo uh, actually adhere to the general recommendations of what we call CAP, the College of American Pathologists, and uh, ASCO, American Society of Clinical Oncology, for the techniques to do the test. But on the other hand, we adhere to the manufacturer's recommendations for what we consider to be positive or negative. HER2, I think, is a prime example of uh, the challenges in this field. Other proteins that have been looked at include estrogen receptor and progesterone receptors. And those two actually were available for testing even before we knew about HER2. And even in 2010, there's still some uh, difficulties with reliability of estrogen and progesterone receptor testing. But again, the work we and others did in the area of HER2 actually have helped open the eyes of many people and the minds of many people to the importance of developing guidelines that can be followed, and also to work to educate physicians and patients related to being involved in clinical trials, participating in the evaluation of new methods of testing and interpretation of the tests so that we can end up with a better future. It is complicated, I tell you, and since uh, the year 2000 when we first alerted people of this problem, many things have been done. Uh, one, uh, we have worked with uh, the College of American Pathologists and the American Society of Clinical Oncology to come up with uh, guidelines related to tissue processing and the type of steps that should be taken to perform the studies in an accurate manner. And I was one of the co-authors of uh, the guidelines that were published a couple of years ago. However, in spite of the guidelines, there's still more work to be done because even now there's a significant amount of discordance that is still troublesome. So what do we recommend for our patients? Well, I think patients should be aware of this situation. I think patients 
should ask their physicians about the degree of expertise of the pathology laboratories where their tests are being done. And I think it's perfectly acceptable for patients to ask for a second opinion so that their tumors can be retested in large laboratories because it's important to be as accurate as we can so that patients can get the best uh, therapies possible. We are involved actually in a variety of, of strategies or studies to help figure this out. One, now we are doing clinical trials in, where, in which we are enrolling patients worldwide uh, with HER2 positive early stage breast cancer to find potentially better ways to utilize anti-HER2 treatment, so novel anti-HER2 uh, therapies. And for that study, we're actually collecting all tumor specimens from all, all over the world and we're testing them at three central or large laboratories, actually one at Mayo Clinic in, in Rochester, the other one in Milan, Italy, and the other one in Beijing, uh, China. Additionally, we are uh, doing additional tests in tumors that are HER2 positive to see if we can find other proteins or genes that can help us improve the predictability of uh, HER2 testing in the setting of breast cancer. Uh, we have established uh, very clear uh, guidelines for these three central laboratories uh, worldwide so that we have a way to do the test that, that then we can understand each other uh, in terms of the impact of the results on patient care.